Welcome to the Figure Fit Podcast, where we discuss fitness, paleo nutrition, yoga, meditation, spirituality, and other ways to have a happy, peaceful, and abundant life. And here's your host, Liz Nearswicky. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to the Figure Fit Lifestyle Coaching Podcast. I'm your host, Liz Nearswicky. Thank you so much for being here today. Today, I wanted to talk to you about this little concept of you know what to do, you're just not doing it. And why? Why is this happening? Why are you not doing the things you say you want to do? Maybe you're doing it a little bit, dabbling here and there, but you're just not actively committing to this thing. Whatever it is, it could be working out, it could be a side project, it could be stretching more, it could be drinking more water, it could be um, having alcohol during the week, it could be literally anything. But it's something that you want to do or not do, but you're actually just not doing it. So with experience and coaching, I've been thinking about this a lot lately and I was like, you know what, I'm going to put a podcast out there on this this because I've got a couple of ideas that I want to share with you about why I think it's happening and what you can do to help yourself. So first and foremost, the way that I see it, it's a couple things. It really comes down to planning. It comes down to accountability. It comes down to you making it simple for yourself, uh, maybe breaking it down into smaller tasks. It comes down to your mindset and your belief are you, are you feeling you're worthy? Um, and I just want to talk briefly about each one of these. So first and foremost, one of the things I think that is the most important is, okay, you know what you want. How are you thinking about it? Are you planning around it? So I was talking to one of my private coaching clients, my one-on-one clients this week, and they were saying, I want to eat healthier. I don't know. I don't understand why I'm not eating healthier. Um, I, I'd like to have salads more often, but I find myself just kind of going into the fridge and eating whatever is there. So we started to look at their day-to-day life. You know, what are their, what's their schedule look like? Are they planning and building in time to prepare for food? Have they actually backed up even more than that? and planned an actual grocery list of what does healthy mean to you. So when they're saying, I want to eat healthier, it's like, okay, well, how about this? Are you planning on Sunday for what you're going to eat that week? In my community, I like to say we call it prep preparation Sunday, prep day Sunday. Um, You look at your week ahead, where are you going to be eating out? What do you, what activities do you have during the week? What can you plan and cook ahead of time to make your life easier so that you're not just falling victim to time and lack of time when it comes to preparing your foods? So planning, thinking ahead of time, and just really creating something for yourself on a Sunday. You're preparing, you're looking at your week and then putting it out there whether it's going to be, I'm going to go to the grocery store, I'm going to get spinach, I'm going to get romaine, I'm going to get the specific dressing, I'm going to get some chicken so I can bake the chicken, um, get some ground turkey, whatever the case may be, you got to plan. If you want to have the goal of eating healthier, how are you preparing for that? Because when you start planning, you are more likely to do the things that you say you want to do. Shocking, I know. So the next thing I was thinking about was what kind of makes people fall off the wagon. And time and time again, it is this one thing. And I want you to ask yourself, am I doing this? Doing too much too soon. Like going from zero to 100 and totally burning yourself out because You've totally changed your lifestyle in a 360 degree manner. So it's like when, it's like at New Year's, right? When there's people making all these New Year's resolutions and they go from working out maybe once a week to going to the gym every single morning at 5 a.m. 
not only did they just totally sabotage themselves, but they made themselves do something that they're, they probably don't like doing because who wants to wake up at 5 a.m. and go to the gym? I'm going to tell you a very select few people. It's not a lot of people that actually already have that lifestyle. So it's built into how they already operate on a day-by-day basis. But if you're not that, don't try to be that. So if you want to become that, slowly start to build that into your life. Don't go from a zero, zero to a hundred thinking you can just change overnight. You've got to slowly build something in. So with that example, if you want to go from being a person that works out in the afternoon to being a morning person, that changes everything. It changes your circadian rhythms. Are you going to wake up and have coffee? Are you going to wake up and have breakfast? Or are you just going to wake up and put your workout clothes and go to the gym? Like all of those things are probably habits and patterns that you already have in your life. So are you you just going to throw all of that out the window? You can't do that to yourself. That's the, the biggest way to shoot yourself in the foot. So don't try to go from zero to 100. Plan out what you want to do and make slow progress over time. Um, it's the same thing like if you're changing your eating habits all like all in. If you're going from, uh, I had a I used to have a coaching client that used to drink diet soda all of the time, and they that's all they drank. They didn't drink water, and they were like, I know I need to stop. So, but I don't like the taste of water, and I was like, what? <laughs> Okay, first and foremost, let's like work on your your the story you're telling yourself about the taste of water. Let's just work on that. Um, how about you just start saying, you know, like, <laughs> I'm not used to the taste of water because I'm used to drinking diet soda all of the time. You know, we had to work on the mindset component. But it was like they want they knew they wanted to quit the soda. So it's like you can't go from drinking only soda to just switching and completely going to just water. So we were like, okay, well, when can you add in the water during their day? How about you start with 16 ounces of water in the morning and then another 16 ounces of water at lunch and then again at dinner and then like not before bed because that'll wake you up in the middle of the night, but like, you know, just spread out these 16 ounces of water throughout the day. And then maybe, you know, in the beginning they were like, I'll do three because they're kind of like my reward. And then I'll start rewarding myself with this uh, soda after I've done something. So, you know, it's going to be different strokes for different folks with what you like and need to do and what you need to change. But don't go from zero to 100 because if you do, you're going to burn yourself out. Try not to do too much too soon because if you do, you're going to burn out and you just need to slowly build things into your life that you can start to make a lifestyle or a ritual or a habit. And that is why I've called this the Figure Fit Lifestyle Program. Because if it's not a lifestyle, you're not going to do it. You have to be able to adopt whatever changes you want to make on a daily basis or a weekly basis. Like it has to be something that you're willing to do. Okay, so on to the next thing. This next one I think is the easiest thing to change, but the one that people put off so easily. Um, It's mindset. And it's really believing with all your heart that when you do the actions, you will get the results. So human beings really just don't like not knowing. And if they think something is futile, they're going to quit. A lot of people think that they should work out or they should do some sort of diet. But if they don't see the results quickly, they lose faith faith that it's even working at all. And then they completely stop. So one of the things about coaching people, like most of the time, my one-on-one coaching clients are at a place where they're like, what else do I have to do? Because I'm at a place where what I am doing is not working. So where is my block? And that's what they're like looking to find. It could be a mental block. It could be uh, nutrition timing. It could be um, habits or, you know, just mindset. And they're getting in their own way in some way, shape or form. So 
first and foremost, you have to believe that what you're doing is going to work for you and you need to be doing the right things. You need to be doing, you need to be getting enough sleep. If it's in terms of like your health, you need to be getting enough sleep. You need to be eating the right kinds of foods. You need to be working out in the right types of workouts because I'll tell you time and time again, I see people doing a bunch of cardio and their body never changes. It's because they're just not doing the right things to change their body. So the thing is, when my clients and I come up with some sort of strategy for them to achieve their goal, they have to have had input. It's not just me telling them what to do. I need to know about them. I need to know about their lifestyle. I need to know what they like. What are, what are their weaknesses? What are their, what's their sweet tooth? Do, what are they do when they're emotional? Do they to, turn to food for comfort? Do they not eat? Do they lay in bed? Like what are the things? And we need to know so we can build a plan around it. And they have to be a hundred percent bought in to what they're about to do. And if they didn't believe that this thing would work and that they could actually do it, they'd quit. They would quit the moment they felt it wasn't for them. So that's why, and like one-on-one coaching, we have to talk. We got to know about like all of the different aspects of this person's human behavior and then build a plan to help them because we don't change really unless we are behind a new way of living, buying new things, thinking in a new way, uh, reminding ourselves of new things. We don't, we just don't change unless our lifestyle in general changes. Okay. So with that being said, one of the things I was thinking about is how I got weird and a little bit OCD about change (laughs) and like what I did to make myself be successful. And I was really thinking about it. I'm like, I used to put post-it notes and notes all over the place, like in my mirror, at my computer, in my phone, in my notebook so I would see it. Because here's the thing. Here's the next thing I was thinking about. You forget. You get going with your daily life and you simply just forget. You forget that this thing you want is out there and it's not top of mind. And so what I realized is like if I really want something to be different, I have to remember and remind myself throughout my day what I'm working towards. Because if it's out of sight, it's out of mind, right? We all know this. So For example, when um, I just simply have a goal of drinking more water, I'm a big believer in drinking your body weight in ounces of water throughout the day. So if you're 140 pounds, you're drinking 140 ounces of water throughout the day. I don't always live this way, but when I want to get fitter, fitter than I am now, or I want to maybe shred um, some weight, then I know the number one thing I can do is start flushing my body, start flushing, drinking more water. And how do I do that? I actually put a, um, like a big shaker cup. I used to drink out of one of those. And then I would put it on the counter in the morning so that it would, I would see it first thing in the morning. That was my reminder. Oh yeah, I'm going to drink six or seven of these today. And I would also take like a little note card out and fill up one and put a little slash on it. Like here's number one. And then I would, I would try to drink as much of it as I could right then and there. And then I would not fill it up again until it was empty because I wanted to make sure I was getting the right amount. So if you have a goal, where can you put reminders? Can you put them on your, in a post-it note on your bathroom mirror? Can you go to your, um, your calendar and put a reminder in there so you see it first thing in the morning? How about putting something on like a a notepad by your desk or a post-it note on your desk so you see it multiple times per day? The thing is, you need to remember what your goal is and keep re-reminding yourself throughout the day of what your goal is because when you keep this top of mind, you're going to do it. You're just going to do it. And 
when it's out of sight, it's out of mind. It's, it's like this for anything. So whatever the goal is, if it is you want to save money or how about this one? <laughs> this is a big one. You want to stop spending so much money on Amazon? How about you just put a note on your calendar every single day? Don't buy anything from Amazon today. There you go. Amazon's going to love this. Um, you know what I mean? But like if your goal is to do something, you've got to remind yourself. All right. So the last thing that I was thinking about is accountability. How are you holding yourself accountable? And is that successful? Or do you need external accountability? One of the things you can do is the notes, like I was just talking about in that last example, is using post-it notes or reminders to hold yourself accountable. But if you need something more than that, and you really need something like uh, more pressure, for example, like think about your work. If you're in your, if you're in sales, you have quotas to hit. That's pressure. And if you're, you know, somebody who really wants to excel, you're not just trying to hit the goals. You're trying to knock the goals out of the park. And so, what is holding you accountable in a in a work situation? It's the goals. It's the, um, you know, it is that's your goal that you have to hit to keep your job. So yeah, that's going to motivate you. But what about in your life when it comes to changing your own behaviors? How are you holding yourself accountable? And can you get external accountability through a coach, a mentor, somebody that you admire or respect? Um, can your can you ask your children or your partner or your spouse, your boyfriend, your girlfriend, can you ask them can you hold me accountable here? Because I really want to do this. And when they do hold you accountable, you got to be willing to accept their accountability. You know, your ego has to be able to accept that. So you guys, these are like the five things I was thinking about. I hope that this podcast helps you today. Um, Really just, you know, figure out what it is that you want to do or that you're not doing. And, um, you know, if it's something you want to do, just put these things into place, like put reminders in your phone, start planning, get some accountability, make it urgent, and you will start to see changes. But I think the biggest thing of all is you've you got to have these things. I mean, you're, you're a human. There's so many distractions. You got to remind yourself and keep re-reminding yourself of what it is you want and set up your environment to help you. And then start changing your lifestyle little by little and commit. And that's it. I think that if you do these things, you will start to do that thing that you're not doing. Hey guys, before you go, I have something for you. So I created this super shred diet. I used to sell it for $197. I decided to give it away. Um, It's something that really helped me early on when I first started to like learn about nutrition timing and carb cycling and, um, you know, having like high carb days and low carb days. And it helped me just so much in so many different ways because I started to learn how to use food for my energy and for my activity on my, on a day-to-day basis. And from here, it just got better and better and better. So I want to give it to you for free. Um, In order to get it, you can go to my website, figurefitlife.com forward slash super shred. It is called a super shred diet, and it's going to just teach you a lot about carb cycling, high carb days, low carb days, um, when to utilize those high carb days versus low carb days. And I think you are just going to love it. And it's going to be like the first domino in you learning so much about your own habits, your own, you know, way of eating, when to work out, like a heavy workout day. And it's just going to be really tangible diet that you can follow at any time. I like to say, and do this for like six weeks at a minimum, and then um, just watch your body change, but pair it with a workout. And on that note, come join me. The Figure Fit Workouts are an all-time super low-cost membership. I'm not sure if you're following me on um, Instagram. 
or on the text list. And I'll tell you about that here in a moment. But I launched this to my text list. Um, the Figure Fit program is now ultra low cost because I want people to be able to access this and just have it. I wanted it to be really truly like a Netflix membership. So something that's low cost, um, easily accessible, and there's no excuses. So the entire the cost of an entire year for the program is less than one personal training session. So go to the website, take a look at that, figurefitlife.com. Um, but in the meantime, download this freebie. It's figurefitlife.com forward slash super shred. And it's um, got recipes in there. It's got example days of like high carb day, low carb day. I think you'll love it. And if you're not yet on my morning text list, I'd love to have you there. It's free. There's no cost here. It's just morning mindset text to help you get started on your day on the right foot. Um, I am always thinking about, you know, just how important mindset is. And I love to put out inspiration. So you can join that text list for free. Just text me the word daily, D-A-I-L-Y, to the number 970-230-3633. And I'll put you on the list. And those texts come right to me. I've got a little app on my phone and I think about these in the morning every single day or Monday through Friday and I send you a text every single morning. So no strings attached, completely free. I'm sending these morning mantras, um, morning mindset texts to hundreds of people and I'd love for you to be there too. So you guys, until next time, enjoy your day and uh, talk to you next week. Ciao.